Okay, so this is the uh, webinar for called Set Your Record Straight with PharmOS. Uh, here with us today are Franklin Egan, the PASA Education Coordinate, uh, Director for PASA, and myself, Michael Stenta, the developer of PharmOS. Yeah, and so um, just by some way of context, one of the reasons, um, one of the kind of the many reasons that uh, at PASA we've gotten interested in, in this tool, PharmOS, and, um, and working with Mike is that we are coordinating uh, some various on-farm research projects uh, that, that make a lot of use out of um, farm records. So one example of this is our soil health benchmark study. Uh, and I can see from the call-in list that we have quite a few people on the call-in list that are involved in this project. Uh, but this is basically a, a research project where we're providing farmers with um, some community benchmarks on their soil health and practices that influence soil health. And so to do this, we collect field samples through a coordinated framework in the fall, but then we also ask our farmers for um, a set of records uh, in terms of how they manage their fields, soil disturbance, crop rotations, soil amendments, and, and related things. And um, many of our farms are doing this record keeping with clipboards or Excel spreadsheets or various cobbled together systems. Um, but uh, as I've gotten to know Mike and learn more about PharmOS, I'm really hoping that, that this could be a very useful tool in making it more streamlined and efficient to, to keep those records over the season and to share and, and to learn from them. Next slide, Mike. So just, just one example of this is we, we turn out uh, benchmark reports through our research where we show farms um, how their practices relate to peers. Uh, so just in this, graphic here, uh, we're looking at the days of living cover uh, maintained on, on vegetable farms through cover cropping and, and other practices, um, and are seeing really a big span of, of practices on PASA farms and uh, can show individual farms how they, they chart relative to their peers in terms of their cover cropping uh, or, their, or their tillage in intensity, just for just two examples. And we do all this because we have shared uh, record keeping framework. and. Um, like I mentioned right now, that's kind of cobbled together with lots of different systems. Um, but I think as Mike will, will explain in this webinar, PharmOS could be a great way to do that in a more streamlined way. Uh, and also to do a lot of other record keeping that can be useful across the farm for uh, crop planning purposes, for organic certification, for um, produce safety reasons. Um, it is uh, just something that, that has a lot of flexibility and power as I think a lot of farms are trying to make better use of information and make more um, uh, database decisions. Yeah, and so in this webinar, we're really just gonna take a quick look at some of the PharmOS features. Uh, there, like Franklin said, there's a, there's a lot of possibilities with it. Um, so, uh, for, for this one, we're gonna focus on a couple of the core features, mainly the ones that are uh, relevant to the soil health benchmark study. Um, but if you want to learn more, there's resources and other videos online uh, that you can find uh, on farmos.org. I'll provide a link to that in a minute. So farmos in general is a web-based application for farm management, planning, and record keeping. Um, so I'll just go real quick through some of the big picture goals of the project to kind of set the context for this. So in general, farms produce a lot of data and that comes in the form of, you know, records of activities, uh, photographs and observations, um, automatic sensor uh, data coming from temperature thermometers and that kind of thing. Um, and just day to day, you know, notes and uh, inputs and that kind of thing. So PharmOS really tries to provide a central database for you to collect everything that you're doing. And it, it leaves it up to you in terms of how granular you want to be with it. But ultimately, it's just trying to create a place to help you organize all of that information so that you can easily get back to it in the future. So the ability to find and manage the records is key. Uh, so there's, in PharmOS, all your records are kind of linked together 
in different ways. So you have your field records and linked to those would be things like your input records uh, and your plantings. Your plantings would be associated with a certain field and uh, so on and so forth. And you need to be able to do this from anywhere. So uh, FarmOS is a web-based system, which is you know similar to something like Facebook or uh, uh, an application that you can access from a browser. So you can use it on a desktop computer, you can use it on a laptop, a tablet, a phone. In general, uh, an internet connection is necessary for it, but we're also working on an offline mobile app that will provide some features offline as well. And one of the really important things in, in all of this is that you own the data. So what sets PharmOS apart from other solutions is that it's an, a free and open source software system. What that means is it is the code that runs PharmOS is freely available for anyone to view and download and change and run themselves. So free and open source software is, is a, a movement that um, you know, started in the, in the 70s in software and has really taken over in a lot of ways. Um, I won't go into too much detail there, but there's a lot more information online if you're interested. So in PharmOS, all of your data is private by default, but we also provide um, fine-grained permissions and we're hoping over time to add more and more options for sharing that data. So even though it's important to, to be in control of it, sometimes it is beneficial to share that information. And one, one example of that is to share some of this, some of your records with Franklin and with PASA so that they can be part of this soil health benchmark study. And I mentioned already, uh, it's an open source project, which means we're also kind of developing a global community uh, around it. So other people are joining in into the development process and testing and um, we're really trying to create a platform that uh, lots of people can benefit from. So PharmOS breaks up its records into a couple of different types. And like I said before, those, those records can then be related together. So the four main types we're gonna look at today are areas, and that represents the where. So those would be your fields, your buildings, um, greenhouses, beds, those kind of things. Then you have assets, and those would be the what. So those would be your plantings that are out in the field or in a greenhouse, your animals, your equipment, anything that needs to be tracked as a thing, essentially. So you can have your, you can have your assets and then those are related to areas and they are also related to the other records. Then you have logs, and this is really the, the core of the PharmOS system is logs. So logs are the events that take place, and those events are related to areas and to assets. So you might have an equipment asset that you then record maintenance logs on or activity logs on, uh, and that those logs can say where it happened, uh, who performed it, uh, and et cetera. And so there's lots of different types of logs, and I'll show you those in, the, in, the, in a minute. Um, but some of them include, uh, like I said, maintenance logs, seeding logs, transplanting logs, harvest logs, um, input logs, general observation logs. So we'll take a look at some of that in a minute. And then people, which are the who. So in PharmOS, you can have multiple user logins and they can, they can be assigned tasks. Uh, in other words, they can be assigned to logs. So you can get a you can use it to to manage your labor as well and, and to keep track of who's doing what. So this just kind of illustrates how things are sort of conceptually connected within PharmOS. You might have your one record for your field, field A, and in that field you have your 2018 corn, and associated with both the corn asset and the field area, you have your seeding logs and your input logs. And then you also have a soil test log that's associated with your field. So as you're entering these things, you kind of develop this interrelated uh, web of records. So it makes it very easy to find records in the future because if we're looking back here, say you wanted to find when you seeded your corn, you could go into PharmOS and say, okay, well, I know I seeded it in field A, so I'll go to the field A record, and then that leads you to the seedings that happen there. Or you can find the, the corn asset that you planted and then look at what the seeding date for that was. 
So there's, it provides a lot of different ways to get to the data you need. So we'll, we'll jump into some demos, um, but for more information, you can go to farmos.org where there's documentation, links, and things like that. And if you're interested, you can join the community uh, by using FarmOS. And um, if you have ideas, you can create feature requests, bug reports, et cetera. We do a monthly community call, which is also, there's a link online for that, that anyone's allowed to join and discuss ideas and that kind of thing. Uh, Franklin, do you want to jump in and mention this? Uh, you might still be on mute, too. Uh, well, I'll just, I'll just describe this real quick. So as part of the um, soil health benchmark study, we're making uh, FarmOS available free to PASA member farms who are taking part in the study. So you can go to this page here to sign up for that. So what you would do is go and sign up and wait for approval on that. Uh, this is what that page looks like. So it's at pasafarming.org slash soil dash institute slash farm based research slash farm OS. And uh, this was, I think this was included in the email that went out, but you can also ask Franklin for this in the future. If you're not a PASA member, you can also go to farmier.com slash sign up. And uh, so it's not free through that, but it's a 30 day trial and only $50 a year after that. So now we'll just jump into some live demos real quick. And I'll, I'll give you an overview of what the system looks like. So before the call, I set up a, a demo system in FarmOS. So this is uh, pasa2019.farmos.net. And so this is how you would get to your site. You would have your own uh, address that is specific to your FarmOS system. And within that, you can create logins for other people to join. So this is the dashboard. It has a map on the right that shows you your farm. So we don't have any areas mapped in the farm right now, but I'll show you how that works. And then on the left, it'll show you what, what logs you have that are upcoming or late. Uh, so logs can be marked done once they're completed. Um, and up top, you'll see the four different types that I mentioned earlier. So you've got your areas, your assets, your logs, and your people. So assets, again, would be things like plantings, animals, and equipment. And new asset types can also be added by add-on modules as well. So there's a beekeeping module, there's a mushroom module, um, a maple production module, uh, and some others that, that are, people are working on too. Similarly, there's different types of logs. So activities, births, harvests, inputs, maintenance, observation, seeding, et cetera, et cetera. And again, these new ones can be added by modules as well. So what I'm gonna show first is just how to add an area to FarmOS, just so that you get a sense of how you can go about mapping your farm. Um, for farms that are participating in the, uh, in the soil health benchmark study, the main thing that we're asking you to do is uh, record three different types of records. Those would be your plantings, your uh, soil amendment records, and your soil disturbance records. So I'll show you where to do that in a second. Mapping of your farm is optional. You don't have to do this to be part of the program, but it's very helpful um, and it, it's also kind of fun, I think. So to map your farm, you would come here and click Add Area. And you would give the area name, so I'll just call this field A. And there's different types of areas, so this I'll just say is a field. And then you scroll down and you can draw the field on the map. So let me zoom out a little bit and I'll just pick one of these at random. This is the Village Acres farm, and we're just gonna, we're just gonna pretend that we're uh, setting up this farm. So what I did is I clicked on the polygon button down on the bottom here, and then I'm just drawing all the the uh, points on the map. So then if we just go down and click save, and I'll do this again, I'll, we'll add a couple, but just to show you. Now that polygon appears on the map, so we can, we can zoom in and see that, and if I click on it, it'll tell me what the calculated acreage of that field is. We can also then click through to get to that record. So this will show us that field, but it'll also show us a lot of other records associated with that field. So right now we don't have anything, 
But let me go ahead and just create a log really quick. So say we, we want to create an observation on this field. I would click Add Observation and say, um, let's see, what could we, what could we observe? Uh, we saw some potato beetles in field A. So there's a lot of fields, there's a lot of information you can store on logs, but you don't have to, it can be very simple. So I'm just gonna make that as a note for now that we saw potato beetles and I'm gonna click save log. And now when we're looking at the field A record, we can come down here and there's our log. Observations, uh, potato beetles in field A. I can also click through to that log itself and see the details about when I, when I recorded that. And what's really nice is that then in, um, in the PharmOS map, I can come and click on that field again and it will show me the observations that were in that field so I can easily quick click through to get to that again. And the same exact thing is true of harvests, uh, input logs, all other types of logs. So it really is just trying to create a general way of linking all of these things together. Here we go. Uh, okay, so. Hey, Mike, we have a, a question that just came up. Okay. Um, Jen is asking if they have uh, two plots of land far away, how would the map accommodate that? Sure, so basically the way that it works is this, uh, the map will try to include all of the fields in one area. So if you've got fields that are far apart, it will appear a little bit zoomed out. Um, but that's actually okay. I think in some cases there are some, there are a number of farms who are using this for, uh, for example, leased fields. So you'll end up seeing, maybe I can open up this one just to show you what that looks like. So in this case, this farm has uh, you know, a couple of fields that are spread out, but you can pretty easily see them and zoom into them to get to the fields uh, that you want. So here's kind of the main farm right here, but then they've got a couple of other ones spread out. So I'll go ahead and uh, I'll add one more area just so that we've got two to work with here. So I'm gonna just say field B and make that a field. And then I'm going to come down and map this one out over here. So just very roughly trying that out. And again, here's the buttons down here. We actually have a whole nother video on how to map. So if you want more details, you can do that. Okay, so with those two in place, now I'm going to actually jump into the, the records that we're hoping to do for the uh, soil health benchmark study. So those would be under this tab here. So if you go back to the dashboard and click Quick Forms, you'll see there's three Quick Forms available for PASA members. There's the Planting Quick Form, the Soil Amendment Quick Form, and the Soil Disturbance Quick Form. And essentially what these are is uh, a quick way of adding records. So they'll, they'll, they'll actually do a couple of things in the background. For example, if you're recording a planting, this will create the planting asset, but it'll also create your logs associated with it. So you can create a seeding log, a transplanting log, and or a harvest log all at the same time. Um, we're not gonna go into too much detail on all of these right now, but I will show the soil amendment log just to show you how that works. So the first thing you would do is, is uh, define the area that you want to be a part of. So as you type, it'll show the areas that we entered before, so I'll click field A. And what this will actually do is pull in the acreage uh, from the map so it can calculate how big that field is. Then we come down here and we say what, what we amended with. So if I want to say compost, we can put that. If you have it, you can enter the nutrient analysis for your input. So the N, P, and K, we'll just say 555 for this right now. And if you did purchase it, you can say where you got it from. So you could say Vermont compost, for example. Uh, if you add a source of manufacturer, it also gives you the ability to put in a lot number and a date of purchase, which is required for some produce safety record keeping. Then you would add your application information. So you would say this is a broadcast or a side dress, foliar or other. 
So we'll just say broadcast for now. And we'll just say we did uh, 10 tons of compost. Um, it also gives you the ability to say what percentage of that area did you amend. So if you only did half of it, you could set this to 50, but the defaults to 100%. Then it'll also, it'll calculate for you what that means in terms of rate. So it'll say 4.44 tons per acre. And lastly, you can enter in your field condition information at the time of the input. So um, you can say the soil was wet perhaps. Uh, and any crops that are in the field or crops that will be going into the field. So maybe broccoli will be planted in two weeks as well as any other notes. And then when you submit this, it's going to create a log for you. So it says log created, soil amendment, 10 tons compost into field A. So if I click on that, we can see all that information for the log. It also draws out on the map where that went into, puts all the other information you entered in one place. And then that log is accessible from other places too. So if I go back to the home page and click on field A, now we also have that input in there. And if I click there, I can see that. I can also get to it by coming up here and just saying logs inputs, and that'll show me the same thing. So this gives you the ability to get to those records from, from multiple places. Uh, Franklin, those were the main things we wanted to cover. Uh, is, was there anything else we should jump into? I know we're, we're already running a little bit tight on time. Um, yeah, I guess, so this was meant to be a very quick introduction. Um, I will say that at the PASA conference, um, Mike, as well as a, a couple other PASA farmers, uh, Alex Smith from Living Hope Farm and Brooks Miller from uh, North Mountain Pastures will be doing a, a, a more detailed version of this with, um, um, you know, laptops and computers in the room to, to try and get going and, and work as you go. Uh, that will be Friday morning at the PASA conference, February 8th, uh, 9 to 12 a.m. at the Lan Lancaster County Convention Center. Um, and, um, you know, something else, um, I guess I'd just point out that I think Mike was a little bit modest about, but um, this FarmOS effort is, um, at this point, you know, kind of part of a global effort where there are a lot of different um, developers as well as scientists and uh, farmers kind of all contributing um, different tools and approaches to it. So it's evolving and kind of adding, adding capability as it goes. Um, the quick forms that Mike highlighted are just one really simple example of what you can do here, but uh, a user has a lot of flexibility in how uh, to use this and I know that people are interested in kind of adding adding tools all the time for things like uh, cover crop selection and um, uh, monitoring um, field moisture levels and, and various other myriad applications. Yeah there are some some you could really get deep into some of this stuff too. We've got uh, some fun things with sensor integration where you can set up cheap DIY sensors measuring temperature and humidity and uh, push that data into your farm OS. So here's just a quick example of that. This is a sensor that's deployed to Wolf's Neck Farm in Maine. So we can see what the current humidity is and temperature at that location. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of, this is a different module too. So then that appears as a new asset under your sensor, under your assets list. So it's a very flexible system and we're, we're really hoping to kind of create a, a standard for, for farm record keeping that is kind of open and transparent in that way. Great. Mike, do you want to go uh, ahead to the, the slide about um, registering your farm? Yeah. Yeah, so just back to this. Um, uh, farm OS as a, as a piece of software is free and, and open source. Um, but uh, in terms of like hosting the data, uh, there's a couple of different ways to, to do that. Uh, one, at this point, PASA is now offering uh, to, to member farms, um, basically a farm OS account where, where we will host the data for you and you can access it uh, via, via any, any web platform. Um, 
And then Mike also has a little side business where he um, will do hosting for farms uh, and offers a 30 day trial uh, or $50 a year. But uh, we have uh, at this point, the capacity for, for 25 PASA farms, um, PASA member farms, and we uh, will be happy to expand that capacity if we get a lot of interest from folks. Um, so you can follow that link to, to set up your account. Great, yeah. Yeah, and just to just to elaborate on that a little bit. So the um, because the, because it's a web based software system, it needs to be hosted on a web server. So you can do that yourself if you're if you want to, but it does require some technical know how. And so that's why there's there's sort of a, a secondary service layer to that for people who would rather just have it set up and managed for them. Great. Are there any any questions for Mike? Do you want me to open up and see if uh, anyone wants to talk? Maybe the chat, in case the. Uh, so we got some questions coming in. Um, oh, great. Okay. Chris from uh, Who Cooks for You Farm wants to find out more information about the um, uh, the, the DIY sensors and, and integrating sensors. Oh, great. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, I think a good place to start there is on farmos.org. Uh, and if you go to user guide, managing assets, sensors, uh, there's a bunch of information here, including some videos that show how, uh, that show a couple of people setting up their own devices. So oftentimes it's, it's using something like a Raspberry Pi, which is a really cheap under $50 uh, little mini computer that you can connect sensors to and set that up in your in your greenhouse. Um, I also I'm also working with a um, a colleague named Don Blair who's who's uh, really specializes in a lot of the sensor stuff and he's working on solutions for you know pe places that don't have power or don't have Wi-Fi uh, being able to still set up sensors in those areas using solar and also long range radio communication. So there's some really exciting stuff happening and uh, it's a like I said, it's a community. I'm not even really working on a lot of the hardware stuff myself, but a lot of other people are. So it's really fun. Great. Uh, Allison asks, uh, how detailed does the crop planning ability get? Yeah. So this is actually I, I showed a little bit with the with the planting quick form. So you can really represent uh, a lot with with just the planting asset and seeding and harvest and transplanting logs. Uh, what, what I'm hoping to build out more in the future is a more elaborate planning wizard that would kind of walk you through the steps and give you more, um, more of a prescriptive and walkthrough approach to your planning. So right now, you, you're still, this is still kind of just data entry on your part. So it provides places to put that information, but there isn't a lot in terms of um, helping you to plan. The planning is still kind of up to you, but the, that's definitely where we want to head with this. And one of the one of the big, that's one of the bigger feature requests that that has been uh, asked for. Great. And so a, a similar question from Plowshare Produce: uh, Could you briefly show how a seeding chart might work in FarmOS? Yeah. So there isn't a uh, a seeding chart per se, but what we could do, and so let me just let me just do this planting quick form just to show you what the result of that is, because that might answer your question. So to enter a planting, what you would do is come to the planting quick form, and first thing you do is define what season that's going to be a part of. So generally that'll just be the year, and that'll default for you. But if you're doing multiple seasons, you might want to say you know 2019 winter or you know 2018 2019 winter. I'll say. Or you might do, you know, main season or uh, spring season, things like that. Then uh, this one, you know, most uh, produce farms won't use this, but some people need to say that they're doing a mixed seeding. So in this case, we're just doing one crop. So let's say we're doing um, uh, Lachinato kale. If I can spell, that was a terrible one to try to spell. <laughs> I think that's right. Um, so we're doing Lachinato kale. Uh, and we're going to say, okay, we, we're at a seeding record, and the seeding is going to be, we'll say, March, we'll do March 18th. And we're going to seed that into greenhouse one. 
So this will also drop down the, the available fields if you want, but you can also define them on the fly. So I'll just say greenhouse one and then that'll be available in the future. And for quantity, I'll say we're doing a, you know, a, a five plug trays. You can add notes too if you want, but I'll leave that blank for now. And this is, I'm, I'm gonna say this is not completed yet because it's in March, 2019. So we're gonna leave that unchecked. And then we'll do a transplanting. So we'll say we're gonna transplant that out on June 18th, or what did I, well, it doesn't really matter, but we'll plant that out to field B. And we'll say, um, uh, we could do row feet, we could do uh, whatever we want here. So I'll, I'll just say um, 100 row feet. Uh, and I'm not gonna add a harvest right now. But then what you'll see is this will kind of auto generate a name of the planting for you. So it's gonna say, this is called the 2018, 2019 winter field B Lachinato kale. So if I create that, notice what it did here. It created three different records for me. It created the planting, 2018, 2019 winter field B Lachinato kale. Then it created two logs, a seeding log for that and a transplanting log for that. So now let me jump over here and go to my plantings list. And we can see now there's my kale planting. It tells me what the crop and variety of that is, what the season of that is. And if I click through to that, it'll show me logs that are associated with it. So there's my seeding log and there's my transplanting log. And then if I go back to my homepage here, those are now showing up on my to-do list. So now I know that on March 18th, 2019, I'm, I'm supposed to seed that kale. And I can click on that to see what the, uh, what the quantity is that I, that I want to seed. So you can get to those records by, from a lot of different ways. I could also come up here and say, show me all the seeding logs. So if you're out in the greenhouse and you're doing a bunch of seedings and you don't wanna filter through your transplanting logs and your plantings, you just come up here and go to your seeding logs and this would be a list of, of seeding logs only. And all of these lists have um, advanced filtering and sorting features too, which you don't need to use, but it helps if you want to say, you know, filter down to the seedings that I want to do for this season or, um, you know, for, for a specific date range or something like that. So again, yeah, it's, it leaves it up to you in terms of planning and, and figuring out what you want to grow, but it, pr it tries to really create the, a place to put all of that information once you've got it so that you can easily look back on it in the future. Uh, Mike Allison is asking about the import seeding button. Okay, yeah. So if we go back to the seeding log here, so all logs and assets have uh, a CSV importer feature. And this, this, is, uh, this works for some things, but it's not, it can't be used to import every piece of information. So there are some limitations to it. And you can find out more about that on farmos.org under the import uh, uh, topic. And th there's actually a, a whole dedicated video here too to show what you can do. But the basic idea is this allows you to import a spreadsheet or a CSV of records. So if you've got a bunch of, if you want to quickly populate a bunch of seeding logs and it's easier for you to sketch those out in Excel, you can do that and then just make sure they've got the right column names uh, and then import them using here. So you could just select a file from your computer and import them. Um, so that's the basic idea there. I would definitely recommend reading this, uh, reading this user guide here because there are, there are some, uh, you know, gotchas with the importing. So give it a try. But again, this is an open source project. So if you find that some things are easy and some things are hard, or if you find a bug or anything, you can, you can, um, you know, let us know about that, and we'll add that to our, to our roadmap. Any other questions from anyone? Okay, well. Uh... Yeah, thanks a lot, Mike. Um, uh, 
Yeah, again, uh, we have capacity to, to host 25 farms now and we'll probably expand that if we get more, more demand. Um, we'll be getting into more detail at the conference in that workshop. And then as Mike mentioned, he does a monthly call and is generally pretty, pretty interested in, in hearing how people are using this and um, evolving this tool as people learn how to use it. Um, so thanks for your time and um, thanks again, Mike. Thank you, yeah. And let me know if anyone has any questions as they get into it. All right. Okay.